Now we talked about overfitting, and you may be wondering, is there such a thing as underfitting? There is. Underfitting happens out of hubris. When you say something like, I learned about straight lines in school, and I insist on using a straight line to solve this problem. There you go. The straight line doesn't fit your data nicely. You didn't let your data speak, and so you get bad performance. Congratulations. It's much better to let your data speak. But be careful when it starts to speak. It begins to overspeak very enthusiastically, and so there's going to be this balancing game where you're going to need to rein in that enthusiasm. That's why we have all those extra steps down the line. Now, in practice, underfitting is not the scary one, and you almost never hear about people fussing about it. And the simple reason for that is that you can diagnose it easily right in the data where you've done it. You fit your model, you got the performance score, it is obviously a bad performance. And so you don't even move to any next stage, and you don't even try to launch a system like this because it obviously sucks. Overfitting, on the other hand, is a silent killer. If you don't check it on new data, the performance in the data set that you use to build your stuff will look too good to be true. You won't know there's something wrong. If you connected all the dots, things will look perfect. And the only way you see that is if you test properly on new stuff. And if you're not very careful about testing properly on new stuff, you end up with systems that will bleed horribly. So you've got to take this really seriously. This is the nightmare. What we're actually worried about, the monster, is bad performance, right? We want good performance. Make it work is what we're about. And the reason that overfitting is the one you hear about is that overfitting is the manner by which you end up with applied disasters of bad performance. Because this one's easy to catch and that one's less easy.